born and raised in New Jersey, uh, okay. on the East coast of the United States. Um, I grew up a devout music fan, which I think is integral to my story. Um, just, you know, a music obsessed kid started going to concerts when I was very young. I was one of those kids who had, you know, all the walls in my bedroom were covered with, with rock posters and things. And then from there, I went to school in New Orleans, um, and at Tulane and, um, the city of New Orleans and Tulane University, like, uh, very much fostered my love of music. And there I discovered other types of music that I, um, hadn't previously really known jazz and, uh, reggae and, um, blues music, uh, of course, New Orleans Creole music and funk and, um, started promoting concerts when I was in college. And then okay. from there, I moved to the San Francisco Bay Area and started a career in the in the entertainment and the music business. Um, first, uh, promoting concerts and then in the record business. And then I sort of had my big break in, in uh, 1995. In December of 1990, or not, sorry, not December. In, <laughs> in 1995, yes. I met a young software engineer Okay. who was who was pissed off he was angry at ticketmaster he had okay. just purchased a ticket to a concert and he thought that the service fee was exorbitant and he was in a position to do something about it so he decided he was going to dethrone ticketmaster he was going to write his own ticketing system that that um over a web browser Okay. And what he set out to do was create the world's first online ticketing system. And he and I became partners in this endeavor. The company uh, is called Ticket Web. And we were the first people to ever sell an event ticket on the internet. So wow. we sold the first ticket ever online in December of 1995. The venue was the bottom of the hill in San Francisco, which I can almost see from my window. <laughs> and um, that business was acquired by Ticketmaster in 2000. Um, that was the first time that fans could buy tickets online. And it was also the first time that venues and event promoters could manage a ticketing operation on their computer over a web browser. Okay. Uh, so it was kind of a two-sided marketplace. And, uh, and then in 2008, um, when the, uh, iPhone with the advent of the iPhone and the advent of social media, I got the ticket web team back together. And we co-founded a company called Ticket Fly, which became the leading uh, ticketing provider, middle market uh, ticketing provider in North America. Um, we had lots of great clubs and the Burning Man Festival and things like that. And that business was acquired by Pandora in 2015. That was the fifth largest tech M&A transaction of 2015. And then um, now I've gotten the band back together uh, for one more go uh, with my current company, Fly Machine, which is a sort of uh, next generation video streaming technology. Um, and that brings me to where we are today. Wow, that's impressive. So I saw your interview and you said to be an entrepreneur, you need to be able to not take no for an answer. What does that's it mean? Right. <laughs> that's right. You know, well, it's one of the, actually, you know what, I, the reason I was one minute late, I was on the phone with a young CEO who I mentor. Yes. Um, one of the things that I really enjoy doing now in my, uh, in my career is um, uh, mentoring young executives and young companies. Yeah. So I'm on board, I take board positions, I take advisory positions, and I'm a, a mentor and an advisor to a number of young executives. Um but yeah, yeah. I mean, look, I have all, it depends how much time you have. I know we only have uh, like nine more minutes, but um, yeah. <laughs> I, I have all kinds of adages and, and idioms. Um, but yeah, you know, one of the things you learn as an entrepreneur is you, you've got to not take no for an answer because, okay. you know, you will be told no thousands of times. And if you accept that as gospel, then you're done. Um. Okay. So, yeah, perseverance really pays in this business. You got to have a thick skin. You got to not take rejection personally. You know, it used to be when we were out fundraising, I've raised about 12 rounds of institutional venture capital in my career okay. over, 
25 to 30 years. And it used to be you'd get nine no's for every yes. And now in, in venture capital fundraising, it's more like 19 no's for every yes. <laughs> okay. So yeah, Yes. you got to learn to, you got to learn to persevere for sure. Okay. How do you see the future of music evolving? And what technology do you think we have the most impact with the Yeah. AI, everything, everything like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's a, well, it's a, it's a glorious time for music. Um, I just, um, you know, really sort of excited about where, where it is today. You know, it's really fascinating. Um, you know, when Napster came along and people were, were pirating music, everybody was sounding the death knell for the record labels. And now we've seen such a transformation and a shift. The record labels are making more money today than they've ever made before from, from music streaming. So, you know, I think we've got a number of great services out there, Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, uh, you know, Tidal. I mean, these are great, great um, services. And, you know, we've got tens and tens of millions of songs in our pockets. Yes. Uh, you know, when I was a kid, we used to go, I was a prolific buyer of albums and CDs and cassette tapes. I used to have to go to my local record store, spend $19 on one CD. And now I spend $9.99 a month for every album ever created. I mean, it's just completely remarkable. So it's Yes. been revolutionary for fans, revolutionary for artists and labels. So that's all great. I also think one thing that's fascinating is the, you know, what I call the democratization of music and really social media and the, and the mobile phone have really driven that because, you know, there's a swath of artists, mid-size artists and small Yes. artists that never would have been heard, you know, 15 years ago, 20 years ago. And Yes. now if you think about like in San Francisco, you know, we've got lots of great clubs that are 500 capacity, 1000 capacity, 2500 capacity, 5000 capacity. Those 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 artists that are playing in those 1000, 2000 capacity venues, many of these artists you never would have heard of them, you know, 20 years ago unless, Yes. you know, and what's changed that is social media, right? Because now Like I hear a band I love and I can post it like on Instagram and I can send it like on Snap to my friends and things like that. And it's created this middle market of music. Um, and it's been great for venues. It's been great for promoters. It's been great for, for labels. It's been great for, for, for musicians. So, so that's really cool. Um, one of the things um, I'm excited about is, is you won't be surprised is, is AI and as Yes. it relates to music. <laughs> yes. Um, and in fact, I'm working on a new project with um, one of my um, associates um, that I should be, you know, it depends if you want to talk about it. I, I could think about whether I'm ready to do that. But w w there's there's opportunities. I mean, opportunities abound in AI. Yes, Um, yes. one of the things we're excited about is helping a musician to become more prolific by delivering delivering ai tools to them that enable them to make more music from a data set that's their own music to start so Okay. you know create a bucket like i'm a musician i can put in say 100 recordings and we can use those recordings of that musician to create more music um you know and, and again solely using that that individual or that band's music as the the input um Okay, okay. and so one example is uh, i won't i won't name name the 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 musician but we're we're close with a very well known musician who scores films and what he told us was <laughs> yes the only reason i don't score more films is i don't have more time in the day okay so he said i get 10 10 um proposals for me to score films and for every 10 i can do one or two but with these new tools new ai tools he might be able to do 10 yes um, so it's really going to be transformative for, for music um so really excited about that um 
let's see what else. I mean, the new streaming models are going to be interesting. The new payout models, I think are coming. Um, yeah, I got, you know, there's, there's a few thoughts. It's good. Uh, can you share any advice for entrepreneurs who want to start your co company like you? Um, uh, yeah, gosh, let's see. Um, I would say, first of all, go for it. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. You know, look, well, with, with, with one, with one caveat, which is, you know, you have to, I think, I think young people starting out have to decide, um, what their risk tolerance level is, you know, uh, being an entrepreneur is, is high risk and it's high reward right? Okay. We eat what we kill, you know, there's no steady paycheck. Um, it's, a, you know, the, the the high highs and low lows. So, you know, not everyone's cut out for that. And, you know, I think people need to decide if they're, if they're ready for that. If so, um, you know, opportunity abounds. There is more innovation happening around the world. There are more venture capital firms now than there are public companies. Yes. <laughs> so I think there are like something like 4,000 public companies or something, and there are more venture capital firms than that. So, mm -hmm. you know, there, there is money out there for the right ideas um, and uh, and go for it. I would say, you know, find find something that's going to change the world, hopefully for the better um, and, and bring it to life.